It's Fate Lego really bad. Well, here I have seven minifigures and some custom blasters. Well, for the first minifigure we'll be taking a look at is Captain Rex from Clone Wars. This minifigure has printing on his arms, the back of his legs, his back, his torso, and on the front, and foot printing, which is much more than most LEGO minifigures we get nowadays. This minifigure comes with dual DC-15 blaster rifles, whereas the LEGO ones come with just some regular standard blasters. Now where the fake LEGO minifigure gets a point here is with the helmet holes, as they are actually positioned properly, unlike the real LEGO minifigures, which are way too high and still have that ugly wart there. Here we can see that the Captain Rex antenna that he has is a lot more accurate to the shows compared to the Lego ones, which are reused for every single minifigure that uses this, which I like better on the Captain Rex over here. Another thing this fake minifigure does well is that it gives Captain Rex a proper waist keep and pauldron, which we don't see with many Lego minifigures anymore. And unlike in the new Captain Rex that just came out, this pauldron isn't oversized and fits the minifigure quite well. Now one major problem with this minifigure is the face print. As you can see on the Lego one, it officially has the dark nougat face which is accurate to the shows and movies. Where Captain Rex has this face which is nightmare feel to be honest. But despite the problem with the face, I still think this minifigure is genuinely pretty good, and overall I'll rate it a 7 out of 10. The next minifigure we'll be taking a look at is this custom Commander Wolf. This minifigure is honestly one of the best, and I have very few complaints with it. Just like Captain Rex, however, the face is a little weird, but it is very accurate with the eye being white on one side with a scratch down it. However, the armor of the minifigure is really good as it has arm printing on both sides, leg printing, and back printing, which I think is really good. This figure is also very similar to Captain Rex as, as it has the proper helmet holes, and it also has some DC-15 blast rifles. The only problem is that the pauldron won't sit down right, and the waist cape does look a little goofy at times. The only other complaint I have with this minifigure is that it doesn't have a range finder, which makes it inaccurate to the show, but you can easily fix that by giving it one of the Lego ones. The next minifigure we'll be taking a look at is Darth Vader's Apprentice, Starkiller from The Force Unleashed 1 and 2. This minifigure is a part of Legends as he is from the Force Unleashed video games, which means that LEGO will probably never be making this minifigure unless it's for something like the 50th anniversary of Star Wars. Removing the cape of the minifigure, we can see that he has some pretty nice back printing and some torso printing too, which you can't see the back printing with the cape on. And though hardly visible, the minifigure does have some printing at the back of the legs and the side of the legs. The helmet of the minifigure is also very good, but the face does fall a little short with detail and looks a little bit weird compared to the rest of the minifigure. Overall, I'd rate this minifigure a 7 out of 10. I think that it could be better, but it still looks pretty good. The next main figure we'll be taking a look at is Niner, who is a Republic Commando, and he looks amazing. The main figure comes with its own pair of macro binoculars that can be removed or kept on. Underneath the shoulder piece, we can see that it's a blank white torso with a few detail lines on both sides. But when you add the chest piece on, we can see that it becomes a lot better and more detailed, Plus, you can add the backpack, which goes just like that. The minifigure also includes arm prints on both sides and a gun. But unlike the others, it only includes one. One thing I find interesting about this minifigure is that it uses this piece right here, which goes in between the legs. And when it goes in between the legs, it acts as an extra piece for his protection. And it also makes him a bit taller too. 
Overall, this is a solid minifigure, and I'm going to rate it a 7.5 out of 10. The last minifigures we'll be taking a look at is the D Doom Squad Troopers, also known as the 442nd Troopers. And even after removing this chest piece that goes around the whole body, it still doesn't fall short of any details on the actual body. And unlike most of the minifigures, this head isn't too bad to look at and actually looks pretty accurate, except for the skin color. Despite this, this is probably still one of my least favorite minifigures, as I think it's pretty boring compared to the other two for 40 second troops. The second one here has a little bit more details to him, but he does have one of the plastic pauldrons, but also does have a regular waist cape, where the other one has no pauldron or waist cape, which is a major step up for this guy than for this guy. This one also does include a little bit different of a face than the other one, which I think looks a lot better and a little bit more accurate to the regular clone troopers we see on film. This minifigure also comes with an amazing piece for his shield, which is fully printed with the Republic logo and can fit into his hand really good. And even when you remove the torso piece, which is right here, it still has some great details on the body. For the last minifigure we'll be taking a look at is Commander Doom, who is the commander of this legion, and he looks amazing in this minifigure form. Personally, taking the helmet off, it's not my favorite look for the minifigure, but it still looks pretty good. Although accurate, his visor is a little bit flimsy and can fall off very easily, as it doesn't have any holes to connect into the helmet, even though the helmet does have holes to be connected. And even when you remove this piece right here, just like the others, it does not fall short of any detail on the front or on the back. The one complaint I do have with this minifigure is that when you take off the visor, the helmet does look to be a little slanted, but it doesn't look too bad. Overall, for this pretty iconic character, I feel like they did a pretty good job retreating him in this Lego form. Although these minifigures are great, I still prefer the Lego variants as they are much better and higher quality. But in some cases, I feel like fake Lego could be good, as you can get minifigures Lego normally wouldn't make any otherwise, such as Republic Commandos, the Commander Doom, or Starkiller. But you tell me if you think that fake Lego minifigures are good, bad, or you don't have any feelings on them. But anyways, that's it for this video, and I'll see you all next time. See you later.